Hi, today I'm going to be talking about order generation within the IG's API and I'm going to go about this is using this kind of simple drawn diagram. So to generate an order, we're going to have to get data from IG. Uh, so that will be the data required for margin, um, the limits, stop losses, um, and controlled risk. And then we'll get that data back to our order management uh, class. And then once we've gone through the steps, we'll have a, an order generated from there. Yeah, so let's get started. So I've got this uh, little script I built. Um, it just simply goes through the functions that I've built and generates an order. So the order, this is the epic code. So epic codes are IG's way of uniquely identifying each instrument they have. So this is the epic code for their spread betting suit for uh, for US Tech 100. So it's for this. Okay, just before we start, I just want to tell you a few caveats with this. So IG's order, so that they call them working orders. Now, these orders aren't like normal limit orders that you would find in equity trading. So if you're trading stocks, for example, not spread betting, uh, the if you were to create an order, a limit order, essentially what you are saying is, I am placing an order at this price point. If the price enters through this price point, I want this order to be filled. If it doesn't, then leave my order as it is. And depending on the characteristics of your order, it will either stay there, cancel itself, or so on and so forth. But what IG has, they have entry orders. So what that means is certain characteristics are applied to them which aren't always clear. So for example, if you have an instrument and let's say its closing price for a previous day was 300 and the, the market hasn't opened yet and you place an, an entry order at 350 if the instrument then opens at 400 what IG will do is they will push your order all the way to 400 and open it at 400 it sounds stupid but that's the way it works so it, it so these orders aren't actually orders that stay in their place they will move and it's not always clear to you or the ig employee or ig support if you do contact them what's going on because they're not too sure themselves as well this has happened to me in the past so that's why i'm i'm letting you know okay so for the code so we have this predefined functions this is like a a, f a whole class I built to essentially initialize all the objects that I would need when trading with IG so you have stuff like market data generation um, some data maps to hold price data um, this is just everything I've written up it's fairly long uh, it's a fair few logic behind it so yeah so just talk you through what's going on in this page. So we have an import here, which we import from predefined functions. So that's a folder here. We're then saying get defined functionality, which is here. And then from that, we're getting the class. And the class is the, the big thing here. We then we in, uh, instantiate that onto an object of df we then say df get this function with this epic code with the direction of a buy with the size of one and force open equals true force open means that um, that you can place two orders uh, in the opposing direction on one instrument so for example if you want to make an open order and a sell order both in the same instrument for some reason so by setting it true it allows you to do that so let's start debugging it then. So you can see here we're initializing the object just to show you what's being initialized. We run this function here and that initializes these are web sockets. So these are the getting real time data. Um, this is the order management. This is the kind of the most uh, most relevant one that we're talking about today. So if we jump out of that.
we come back here and then now let's go into that okay so what we are essentially saying here is if we have limits so if you have stop losses or limits uh, profit limits so that when we go into profit we exit out when we go into a loss we exit out so those are uh, stop losses and limits so we have stated that by default being true so if you have a function and you in that function in the same brackets you specify the parameter to equal a static value then it means that if that parameter is left blank it will default to this right so you can see from here we left limits out and by default it's setting it to true so we have an if statement here saying that if we are using limits then let's go get some market data so by getting this market data it's just going down into the into the function and essentially saying if if an epic value has been given then retrieve data for that and return the data else if it's nothing then give back nothing yeah so yeah so if we go into that you can see here we've generated uh, a dictionary and we have instruments dealing rules and snapshots so instruments there's just essentially some details about the instrument so let's look into the console so data epic you can see we've got these if we say uh, data score epic dot keys you can see we've got those keys so those are like the titles for for our data and here you can see instrument um, DBF means daily funded bets. Uh, you got the name, you got the force open, it allows it. Stop limits are allowed, lot size, uh, how much you have to bet by, yada yada yada. Currency, blah blah blah, blah blah blah, blah blah blah. A lot of stuff. So, then we have something called dealing rules, and right now these two are the most important to us dealing rules and snapshot so dealing rules essentially tells you um, what's the minimum what's the minimum deal size so I can deal at 0 0.5 uh, bet per point um, controlled risk it's basically guaranteed stop loss how far does that have to be from your current opening position it's 10 units normal stop loss limit is 4 units maximum limit distance control spacing that sort of stuff just to give you a rough idea what the difference is between min controlled risk and min normal stop um, so the, the thing I was telling you about before where you have um, slippage where a market can open above or below where your entry is if you place a controlled stop loss it it stops your order from from being too severely influenced by slippage so if, if for example I put um, a min controlled stop loss at um, 375 and my order is supposed to open at 350 and I'm doing a short and the market then opens the instrument at 400 it will stop my position at 375 that's essentially what control stop loss does but it still will take the loss from 350 to 375 into account so it's just a way of controlling risk because um, a IG's APIs is, is what well, their trading is not their trading service is not that great at doing that so if we then look at snapshots you can see blah blah, blah. tells you the time it received the request when we sent it the bid the offer 
any delay time so sometimes some instruments can be delayed by 15 minutes for those ones you want to avoid um, unless you're doing like maybe monthly trading uh, yeah so you can see those those uh, values so what we're doing here is we're getting the dealing rules into this object here we're then checking if we got price order levels you can see here we have you can see by default it's nothing so and we've provided nothing so it will generate its own so you can see those were the prices at the time now another thing to bear in mind is when you're making limit orders in a normal equity trading what you can do is you can place buy orders you can place buy orders you, you place the buy orders in the bid and you place the sell orders in the offer or offer or ask but in this case you have to place your sell orders in the bid so it's, it's the opposite so essentially you have to place your sell orders in the bid and your buy orders in the ask uh, otherwise it throws you an error and says your order is rejected again it's it's not intuitive um, if, you were, if you've if you done equity based trading it's not the same so it's just another thing to bear in mind so you can see here we have a our direction is a buy so we're hitting the ask okay so you can see here that we have a function that works out the margin required to get the distance um, so, so essentially the requirement for the minimum stop distance from our position so if we go into that we can see here if we have guaranteed stop as true we will then get the controlled risk if we have guaranteed stop as um, min or normal or stop then we'll, well, so if our guaranteed stop loss is a false then we'll go on this this one here so you can see here we're getting that that says our map unit is, is so our units in points and our value is 10 so it's basically saying 10 units away now what you can sometimes get them in percentages so that's just to take care of that obviously divide by 100 times the price that tells you how much of a difference needs to be and then we add that on or yeah so we add that on to the stop distance and then here you can see our buy and then we can see here we've got the whole order here creating it so we've got our direction we've got the epic we've got the size we've got the price we've got the limit we've got the stop and we've got a force open and if we go into that um, we come into this other function which is basically our, my order management function um, which is one step before we go into the IG trading um, to the trading API that that uh, IG provides from github so we're just one layer away from from this so just one layer away from that so no yeah this is just there's a concept in programming where you encapsulate what varies so when you have orders that uh, when you have functions that that have a lot of variety to them instead of bundling them up all into one function and then having to constantly change it when you code you separate them out into multiple different functions and have it in a way that you can grab what you need so that way there's less coding back what you've already coded instead you just code what's new um, it's a much easier way of working less refractoring in the long process so yeah so we go we get in the Currency code, we can then get in the direction, epic, that, some more logic here, yada yada yada, good to cancel, and then here we're actually accessing the IG API service to create the order. And then here you can see, it's working the stuff, waiting the rest for the IG API and uh, yeah we're creating the order setting the parameters we have a bit more functions here 
and then it sends it off as a request and then if all goes well it will return us an object and the connection was reset because we took too long to <laughs> took too long to send the order off okay so let's show that again okay so, so you can see the order has been sent off um, Let's print this out. It might be easier to read if we print it. No, we're the same. Okay, so hey, you can see the date. You can see the stage is opened. Reason is successful. So that essentially shows us that our order has been put through. Um, a deal state was accepted. Reference. Level, size, direction. Our stop distance is 20, and our limit distance, limit distance is nothing. Guaranteed stop is false. Um, yeah. So just to show you that it worked, you can see here that our order actually got filled, which is annoying. Okay, so let's close that. Uh, great. Okay, let's refresh this. So, okay, so let's run through this again. Damn it. Let me try that again. Okay, so order's open and then it keeps being filled. Annoyingly. And here you can see our, our distance of minus 20 points. Distance of minus 20 points. Okay. So that's how you generate orders. Um, is there anything else that needs to be said? Um... I think in, just to kind of overall round off, um, what you want to do is try and make lots of functions that have different varieties to them and make loads of if statements. So when you provide flags like false, open, true, there's logic in place to make this more dynamic um, instead of you having to go back and change different functionality because it this this working order stuff does have a, a tendency to become quite finicky because if your limit is different sized or or something else it, c it can be a pain to try and debug and you waste a lot of time on that sort of thing so try to have lots of functions that help you try and create orders uh, yeah thanks for watching